there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. This time on Dangerous Flights. I can't hear anything. The pressure blows at 10,000 feet. We need to turn back now. We're having multiple problems with the airplane. Oh, now you're overshot. Go back. A father-daughter delivery job Dad. becomes a sky-high sparring match. I'm not going to get any better with you yelling in my ear. Strapped for cash. We just put a boatload of gas in the plane, and we have no way to pay for it. Brad and Stu get stuck in a runway standoff. There's a semi-truck parked in front of us. We can't leave. the border This is exactly what Carrie and his 18-year-old daughter, Claire, were warned about. They were right when they said it was going to rain in Manauso, because it's raining like hell over there. Whoa. Whoa. Earlier today, locals tried to steer them clear. Is it? Mm. It was very bumpy. I mean, if you don't think you can handle it. I tell you, if I was if I was by myself, there's no way I'd be going today. Well, we're going. Carrie's an old hand at storm dodging. That is a huge cluster right straight ahead. We're running into bad luck here. But it's turning into an aerial obstacle course. There's another one over there. This is Claire's first time on a ferry flight. She's never really been in any serious weather. So this is going to be a real eye-opener for her, because there's no getting around it. It's their first storm since leaving Uruguay two days ago to deliver the Beechcraft Bonanza to its new owner in North Carolina. They're almost at the halfway point, over Brazil, where storms are known to be fast and fierce. It looks pretty nasty We're up there. We're heading straight into quite a mess up here. You can get a wall of thunderstorms that can block you from the airport you're trying to get into. And they might be in your way for three hours, long after you've run out of fuel and crashed in the Amazon. The timing is pretty critical. This bill is really dropping. With sunset closing in, Carrie's got two options. Turn back before they run out of fuel, or roll the dice and skirt around the storm. I might increase the speed, burn a little bit more gas. I think getting there in daytime is a little more important. I don't know if there's kind of a break in here. Kind of doing a little slalom course through these guys, trying to shoot the gap a little bit. They clear the worst of the storm. Visibility 5,000. But it's left behind a thick trail of cloud. OK, the decision height is 450 feet. Okay, if you don't see the runway yet, I'm going around. Claire needs to spot the runway before the plane gets too low. If I don't see the runway, I have to say that? Yes, decision height. Decision height, I don't see the runway. If I don't, to say that. If you don't, we die. Hey, so how far are we from the airport? About five minutes. Oh, cool. Check it out. Check out the Cessna coming in the land. Very nice. We must be close. Brad and Stu have their own epic journey ahead. We got to check out this plane. 
It's been under heavy maintenance for who knows how long. We're flying this thing over 17,000 kilometers. They face a mammoth 14-leg trek across three continents and an ocean before touching down on the other side of the Canadian Rockies in Langley, British Columbia. This looks familiar. Where is our plane? Probably inside, because it's uh, not seaworthy. <laughs> there it is right there. In my mind, I was expecting to see kind of a beat up airplane. It it's did. got new paint, that's for sure. Came around the corner, and it's really beautiful. Their ride, a 20-year-old Beechcraft twin-engine turboprop. How's it going? Hi there. Hey, How are you, you? Rick? Stu, hi, Stu. Hey, I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. Hi, Brad. So this is it, huh? It looks yeah. pretty nice, actually. Yeah. Just get fresh paint. New paint interior, new engine on the left side. Very nice. Oh, wow. A lot nicer than the ones I've flown. A lot yeah. nicer. In the ferry business, you're flying used aircraft. And sometimes these are laid around for years yep. before they're actually flown. This one, I was a ding, little ding out of it already. Yep. We really aren't sure when the last time this aircraft was actually operated. See just a little bit of spray here. And how it's been maintained. I have a question. Yes. What's up with the oil leak? We had a big fuel leak the other day. We sorted that out. It was fuel draining and leaking into the wheel well. One of the things about an airplane that looks beautiful, especially an older airplane, is it has no bearing on how mechanically sound it is. What's it been in maintenance for? It had had uh, an engine failure prior to the sale. So uh, it needed a new engine. This plane hasn't flown for a couple of years. They got a brand new engine on it, so that's a huge, huge deal. How much time does this uh, engine have on it? Zero. Yeah. So this flight is the first one yep. on this engine. I've done all the checks I can on the ground, but there's a few things that we can't really check properly, like pressurization, for example. We'll do all those tests in the air. And who's going to go on this? Are all three of us going to go? So uh, I'll go in the right seat so I can um, I can help you with the radios, or you can do them. It's up to you. And I'll uh, work the pressurization. OK. Are you cool with staying out of the test flight, just letting me and Rick do it? It's got a new engine in it. It had a fuel leak and leaking oil on the ground. I'm good for the first flight on the ground. <laughs> so what you're saying is if, if we survive, you're happy to go in the aircraft. You know how to make me comfortable ever so nicely. <laughs> you flown 1900s before? Yeah, I've been flying them for the last five years or so. All right, you ready for start? Yep. OK, airspeed's alive on this side. Not live here, 80 knots. Gear up, please. Well, it flies. Okay, you ready to bring the flaps up? I'll get the gear. After maneuvering this 13-year-old Bonanza through storm clouds, Carrie and Claire face a wall of fog over the runway. If we have to go around, you know, at the decision point, I'll give it full throttle. Be ready for the approach flaps to come up. And on this landing, I really need her to pull her co-pilot weight. We have to work as a team to land this plane safely. A foggy landing can challenge any co-pilot. Claire is still earning her pilot stripes. Descend to 1,500. That's your job. Sorry. There was a lot that my dad was expecting me to do on this flight, and a lot of times I'm used to just sitting back and letting him do all the work. You're going to you know, know the final uh, decision height. Yeah. You're looking for that on your altimeter. Yeah. In just 300 meters, Claire's got to spot the runway, or they risk hitting the ground. If she can stay focused long enough. Tower, 118.3. All right, Claire. You're not paying attention. I know it's really exciting to be on your first ferry flight, landing in the middle of the Amazon jungle in a thunderstorm. But come on, give me a little help. Don't be taking pictures so you can send them to your friends. Right to 070 to inward.
Precision altitude. Right on cue. Claire spots the runway. I have the runway. <laughs> well, despite my better judgment, we made it. We did? Aren't you glad now that we added on a chunk to our trip? No, I'm not. I'm not happy. We did three legs today. I'm tired. I want to take a day off. It's the first three minutes of life for the 1900's new left engine. Environmental failure. But it's the other one that acts up right away. We were climbing through about eight or 9,000 feet and the red light started going off. The cabin's losing air pressure. Our cabin is climbing at 2,000 feet a minute. Well, we're climbing faster than the aircraft's climbing. The cabin was, you know, 10 or 11,000 feet, meaning we're running out of oxygen. Brad tries a reset. There's another one. Bleed air fail. Fail a second time, eh? Yeah, well, fail a second. Hold on one second. Why aren't these working? Now the new engine stops feeding air pressure to the cabin, too. Don't buy or fail. We got a pressure spike. The airplane's designed that if one side fails, the other side is capable of running the whole system. The new engine was not capable of doing that. So the right side failed. Left side just couldn't pressurize the plane. Are we talking last year? I don't know. Now, a new problem. Turn back now. We're having multiple problems with the airplane. We're here safe and sound. I mean, I said, let's go for it, and pushed him into it, kind of. And we, hey, we made it. It was fine. Well, how much real? I don't see why we can't just do the same tomorrow. But after pinning more than 3,300 kilometers of sky time in only three days, thank you. Carrie has other ideas. I want to take a day off. You know, I've done all these ferry trips, and every single one of them, I've been rush, 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 and fatigue's a killer. Let's rush now and enjoy our time in the Caribbean later. When I'm having arguments with other co-pilots, I'm used to winning. When I'm dealing with Claire, it's like arguing with myself, and that can be kind of tough. We can still enjoy our time in the Caribbean. Not as much. We're Why not as much? We're not even going to be home by New Year's if we take this whole trip lax. I'm really pushing my dad to get to the Caribbean for Christmas. When he's trying to make safe decisions, I'm kind of just pushing to push along because I know he can. I know he's a good pilot. I don't want to get up at 5 o'clock. We've been getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning for four days. Instead of yourself, it's like drinking from the fire hose. You just got to go, go, go. Yeah, but I don't have to. I don't have to go, go, go all the time. We can stop, stop, stop. Something that Claire's having a hard time understanding is the effect that fatigue has on a pilot. I want to take a day off, and she wants to keep going. We'll see what happens tomorrow. <sighs> Frustrating. Hey, Claire, got to get a picture of me. Driving a boat on the Amazon. In the battle of wills, Carrie's won this round. It's yeah. a day off flying. It really is. Okay. Yeah. When I say no to my dad at home, I'm just being an annoying teenage daughter. But here, I'm his co-pilot, so I kind of have to do what he says. But this is no hammocks and beer-filled afternoon. I think this is uh, some serious jungle. Flying over uh, 600 and some miles of jungle in a single-engine aircraft is pretty dangerous, actually. Any one of a 1,000 things can go wrong. And boom, we're in the jungle. Carrie's already had one close call. Last year. They're running pretty low. Over the same stretch of rainforest. I really hope we make it. Oh, there we go. There's like priority landing, uh, fuel critical. Normally, in these accidents and planes, people don't know how to survive when they fall down, when they get in the middle of the jungle. 
So that's why most of them die. So you guys have shirt pants, no socks. Be careful. This is the time that the snakes are concentrated on the trail. They're small but venomous. So they use this ant here as a mosquito repellent covering the, the smell of the human body. Ah. Okay, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> this is insane. If you have a crash and be lost in the jungle, the animal that you should really look out of like is from the wild pig. The ones that goes in very big groups and they're cannibals. Huh. A, a herd of wild pigs. This is crazy. Right now, it just seems kind of overwhelming. I mean, some pretty intense jungle out there, and I'm not prepared. If you want to start a fire, take the battery and start a fire very fast. And that's the one thing that we could use to signal aircraft that are searching for yes. us. And we build a big, smoky fire. Yeah. I had my doubts coming into it, but this is some good training. Well, this stop here, this is just for the shelter. Yesterday, I was ready to hit the sky. Now, being immersed in the Amazon jungle definitely puts a lot of weight on my thoughts. It could be the difference between life or death. Ugh. We're having multiple problems with the airplane. Brad needs to get this Beach 1900 back on the ground. Fast. Noisy as hell. Your captain here needs your something. There's not enough air pressure in the cabin. This is here. Yeah, it's the window. So pressure pushing from outside the plane has popped open the vent window. Charlie, uniform risk is cleared for the last uh, visual approach. The air leak drowns out air traffic control. I, I couldn't understand that. I, mean, I can't hear nothing. Lance, here, uh, sorry about this. We're having real time hearing your instructions. Could you say again? Charlie, uniform risk is cleared for the left uh, visual approach. Runway is 06 left. OK, descent checklist, please. Three green, final flaps clear to land, cross the forward, yacht ends way, runway's clear. Looks like we'll be doing this again tomorrow. Yes, it does. All right, runway's made. Who was just test flight from hell? Yeah. We'll take in the course here, Fox, I think, to go. How's it going? Ah, oh, we got a couple issues. Ugh. The right bleed failed, and we got an incredible amount of noise from the co-pilot's vent window. Good I'm more problem. concerned about the about the environmental fail. Yeah. Any airplane should be able to, if one bleed air fails, the others should carry it, and it didn't. Do you think it was the bleed not adequately pressurizing? The pressurization deal is a no-go item for us. We can freaking go low, or we're going to run out of gas halfway there. Not being able to go up to altitude is going to make it so that we can't burn our fuel as efficiently. We won't be able to get it all the way across the ocean to Canada. We can't go without that. It's no. got to be sorted. It has to be. Well, it depends on what the failure is and what parts availability is. You know, we're in South Africa and can't get the parts. Yeah. <sighs> Worse, only Brad is certified to captain the 1900, but it comes with an expiry date. I haven't been to school for this airplane for a year. So on the last day of the month at midnight, wherever this plane is, I'm a pumpkin. I can no longer fly it. So we have to get this thing delivered. Frustrating. So ready to go. It's got to get fixed tomorrow. The fuel to check. Make sure it's the right kind of fuel for the airplane. I think the survival training really brought something home with Claire. Claire is taking everything a little bit more seriously. So she's doing her job better, checking the plane over, checking the fuel. And make sure there isn't any dirt getting in there, because that could cause problems. Could be some major issues on a leg like this. 
I need to prove to my dad that I can be a competent co-pilot. And this is where it really comes down to it, where everything has to be impeccable. There's no room for error over a leg like the Amazon. It's 655 kilometers of dense rainforest before they'll see another runway. All right, all set? Yep, let's go. 316, clear for takeoff. It's all yours. Hey, everything looks good. I want her to fly most of this trip. I want her to have her hands on the controls as much as possible. We're not driving to Boa Vista. I got it, I got it. I know. Oh. Couple of bumps. OK, start your left turn. You're going to concentrate most on your artificial horizon. Concentrate yeah. on your heading in here. I'm trying. It's just... I know. Right after takeoff, I left Claire on the controls to see how she would do, give her some practice flying on instruments. Just listen. When you're going through the clouds, just, just stare at the artificial horizon. I know, Dad. I know you know. Watch these birds. Every minute of experience she can get at this stage of her career is like gold. A quick glance over here, seeing you're 10 degrees off. Most pilots die within 90 seconds of flying into clouds unexpectedly if they've had no instrument training. A little, a little correction, easy corrections. Mellow up, mellow up. Now you're overshooting. You're still, now you're overshot. Go back. Dad, I've got it. You got to listen to me when I'm trying to teach you something. OK, let's hang, hang a hard right. Carries a backseat driver, no matter who shares the cockpit. You need to have your speed under control. That point. He's grabbed control from Corey. I don't like to put flaps down and then have to add power to overcome the drag of the flaps. Lectured Marcio. I'm sure you want full flaps. Easy, 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 easy. And barks too through a landing. But now, he's met his match. Need to go a little bit? 10 I degrees, I know. Hold my altitude. Attitude, but you still, you don't want to drift. It wastes a lot of gas and energy if you're flying all over the place constantly, banking the plane, flying like a drunken sailor. The only thing more annoying than a backseat driver is having one next to you in the cockpit while you're trying to fly. I understand, but every time prior to that, you overshot it by six yeah, or seven degrees. And I understand that it happens, but you have to get better at it. Well, I know, but I've got it once. I'm not stupid. I know what well, you said. Well, when I tell you to do so something the first try. time, don't argue with me. Just say, OK, That's what I'll I try. I, you didn't I, I, try. And don't tell me to you know, stop. Don't tell me anything. I know it all, because you don't know it all. You don't know hardly anything. I'm not going to get any better with you yelling in my ear. Okay, well, first of all, yeah. I... Hopefully he's got some sort of news. News is good. Brad and Stu need the Beach 1900 back in fighting form. It's due in Canada in just a few days. But I just want it fixed. There's no more problem. We're done. A little disconcerting. Uh -oh. This is bad. And we walk into that hangar. It is in complete pieces. Tools everywhere. All the cowlings were off. All the wheels were off. They do have a wrecking crew on this thing, don't they? Oh. I mean, they're all over, like 50 dudes out there, I'm telling you. This thing is nowhere even close to being ready. The plane is not delivered by the last day of this month at midnight. We're dead in the water. That's when Brad's certification to fly this plane expires. The 1900 would be stranded between here and Canada with no qualified pilot to fly her. Rick in the house? Anywhere? Oh, there you are. You got, you got the full-on wrecking crew out here today, huh? Yeah, well, we've been pulling it apart for a while. You know, the first impression of the plane, it was super nice. I mean, the paint looks great and the interior looks great, but at the same time, they, they call that polishing a turd. You take an airplane, slap a nice coat of paint on it to cover all the cracks and bumps and bruises. Now there's four or five components in the system. 
that uh, could be the problem. So we're just gaining access to those to do some tests and narrow down the uh, culprit. The airplane has had a bit of a rough life. The plane's got its quirk. Apparently, it got repoed. All three banks showed up and started going, oh, I want my airplane. And then the, the court battle started with who actually got a piece of the plane. So it's been sitting on the ground for like three years or something like that. So it's bound to have problems, and it did. It had problems. So this, this valve is defective then? This valve is the source of the 1900s cabin pressure problem. It regulates air pressure in the plane. And uh, I don't know if or when we can get one. Unfortunately, here in South Africa, we can't just go across the street to the parts supplier and buy what we need for any price, really. They're just not available, so. Uh... The entire cowl system's got to come off. This lower cowl is, takes a long time to do it. Yeah. I think I'm glad I'm not a mechanic, because it is just a total mess in there. We could be here for days. Listen to me, minor corrections. When you're in the clouds, you don't bank that hard. She was being way too aggressive on the controls. Classic rookie instrument pilot mistake. I'll stop your turn. You're going to overshoot it again. There you go. I want three. You're still, now you've overshot it. Go back. Dad, I've got it. I'm not going to let my dad boss me around, that's for sure. I mean, I'm pretty stubborn too, you know, just like him. He hasn't been this bad since he taught me how to drive. And I knew you it was going to happen. You're going to go right past you. You can tell me once, but if you keep but yelling you, I'd at never, it, I... But I'd never told you the first time. You were doing it, you're learning for the first time. And I needed you to shut up and listen the to The first time you said was... it, I knew what you meant. I'm a pilot too. I'm second in command. So I'm going to hold my ground, that's for sure. I'm just trying to tell you what to do. And I don't want you to argue with me when I'm telling you that. I'm teaching you something. I'm learning, and when you're learning, you do things wrong. Sometimes. Like now, you're you're 10 degrees I'm off heading. I'm trying to deviate from this huge cloud. OK, then. <laughs> when I thought about it for a second, she was actually doing a pretty good job for the conditions we were in. You're doing pretty good, actually, if Claire, for someone who doesn't have an instrument rating. Well, thanks. You got this way faster than I did. <laughs> I mean, your first real instrument flying, actual conditions, most people learn under a hood, not over the Amazon. She did a great job. Double gun. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Ah, oh, you're back. Yep. You got it? Yep. We, it was a bit of a battle to get it off, but yeah, bureaucracy. Those parts uh, that we thought would be so hard to obtain in Africa were across the runway. It's right over there off another plane just like this. Good. It looked pretty serviceable. A new valve should put a stop to the plane's cabin pressure problem. Let's not mix them up. Exactly. That's what I want to That make. automatically takes care of the window that's been popping open. Thank God they can get this thing fixed and we can get on our way. Great. Well, let's put it in. Cool. It's entirely possible that the part that we got was initially even cannibalized from this plane. So it's just the way it works down in Africa. Now I'll put the connector on and we're ready to go. It's got four. It's got four tanks. Can you fill all of them full, full? As full as you can. Thank you. We're, we're, we're hoping to get this thing and moved over to the terminal at 11.30. You know, we want to be wheels up at 1. So we got a, this is our fuel release. So that's OK. No, it's not OK. It's not OK. I don't know this one is told. There's like a big problem with fuel. What's that? It totally f***ed up the fuel release. Yeah. We got to pay with the credit card for all this gas called for fuel. It's the only fuel on the field. Showed our release, and uh, they they never heard of the company. It's got to get paid for. There's a semi-truck parked in front of us. We can't leave. He's not moving that truck till that, that fuel's paid for. Yeah. The boss, Corey Benson, you know, set this flight up all the way from Utah. But here we are, thousands of miles away, 
trying to deal with problems that he can't even see. Normally, Corey would give us like 10 grand, and I asked for 10 grand. He's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. We'll have all the fuel covered. You just sign for it. Brad is highly irritated by it. You don't want to give us the tools to make things happen. Whatever. When things don't go his way, he lets someone know about it immediately. Hey, what's going on? We just put a boatload of gas in the plane, and we have no way to pay for it. What do you mean? You guys had sent us a fuel release, and the, the company doesn't exist on this airfield. Well, I spoke with the driver, and I said, hey, man, you know, uh, this is our release. He said, don't know who these guys are. You got you to gotta pay with a credit card or cash, and we don't have it. How much fuel is on board? Are they clicking this off in liters or in gallons? Liters. Liters. In hundreds of liters. Yeah. No, I'm not putting three grand on my credit card. I mean, it's not my responsibility. The domino effect, if we leave late, is massive. We get delayed two hours for fuel. It's not just we're arriving late and getting to the hotel late messes up customs. You see what I mean? I'll get it fixed. Five minutes tops. It's fine. Whiny little bastard. They got to fill out a form and send it to Europe. Europe's got to manually fill it out by hand and then fax it to these guys. These guys got to get the fax and then say that it's good or not. He claims it'll all happen in five minutes. I think it's All right, they actually came through as, uh, as promised. Five minutes, we got the paper to give it to them and be able to pay for the fuel and be free of the fuelers. Works for me. That one works. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Pull the chalks, kick the tires, light the fires. This first 1,500 kilometer leg from South Africa to Malawi will be the acid test for this overhauled plane and a new pilot matchup. All right, you know what a 1900 looks like, don't you? First one for me. Up until now, I had never actually put my hand on a Beach 1900 as a pilot. I certainly hope that I can meet his expectation. We've never flown together. If you see anything you don't like, tell me. I won't be heard about it, and I'll do the same for you. And uh, we'll go from there. We're going in totally dry. We'll see how it goes. I have no idea how he talks on the radio, how he flies. You ready? Get the hell out of here. Yeah, faux show. Charlie Golf, uniform, and for whiskey. Uh, clear to take off to uh, 8,000. I don't think you're transmitting. Uh, zero, uh, uniform, whiskey, squawking. Uh, what was the squawking again? 673? 734. Okay, Buffalo, go. Charlie Golf, uniform, whiskey, or at least the subject I for traffic inbound, sir. Listen up. Okay. Just say, say again. Big end for uniform whiskey. You gotta cue your mic. Keep hitting the wrong one. We gotta tighten up this radio work. It's a little, a little rough. Yeah. What the f is going on? When you're in an aircraft that everything is foreign, you're like, all right, everything kind of goes. Yeah, I hear you. That goes, takes, takes a step back, but it's all good. I have tons of time. And there was a lot of excuses going on, you know, about, oh, it's a new plane. And it's like, yeah, but talking on the radio, it doesn't matter if you're in a Cessna or a 747. It's press a button and talk. Charlie Goff, uniform is very clear to you. Departure 06 left. No, we're not clear for departure. Line up one way. Like I said, man, got to tighten up those radio calls. We're not clear for departure. Stu, who is way, way behind the eight ball, he's pretty low time. He doesn't even have 1,500 hours yet, so there's going to be a lot of mentoring going on, I think. Uniform, uniform, whiskey's ready for departure. And tell him, two crew, zero packs, five hours gas. And uniform, whiskey, uh, and uh, we have two crew with uh, zero passengers. We have five hours fuel. Here we go, big cat. Work your magic, cowboy. Ooh, a little windy. Positive rate, call it. Positive rate, gear up. Whiskey enters the TMA, hitting 0 and 3 0. What's that for us? Yep. Get your game together. It's radio work.
Ready for descent to Bovista? Claire is also cutting her teeth landing an unfamiliar plane. So Claire, uh, what do you think? You ready to land the big old beast? Yeah, I'm ready. Get at me landing. Claire's probably a little nervous about landing this plane because it's bigger and faster than most everything that she's used to landing. Dean, you're going to land. I'm putting my shoulder harness on, too. Ha. Ah. Ha. Ah. Landing an airplane can be one of the trickiest parts. The real test comes when you have to actually come down and make contact with the Earth. Boy, you don't want to screw this one up. There's some uh, mountains down there, some big old hills. Like right into that cloud. Gonna put us right in the bumpy bumpies. Boom, there's one. Hi. 316 Papa has runway in sight. Okay, your plane. Three green. You're okay, now come up, 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 up. Pull back. There you go. Put some power in. You're gonna need power. Pull back just a little bit to get our speed. Give it just a little bit more gas. Don't let it sink. Come on. Put your hand on the throttle. The Bonanza is a heavy airplane. She was having a hard time holding it back with just one hand, so she took her hand off the throttle, grabbed the controls with both hands. Uh. Boom. Throttle off, throttle off. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, never take your hand off the throttle, Claire. She left a little bit of power in, so as soon as we landed, back up we went. Kind of a bounce. Yeah, you know I know to not do that, but I just couldn't see her. But yeah, never take your hand off the throttle. You're landing because yeah. then you got to reach for it. You might pull the wrong thing back. I'm just not used to this side. It's like yeah, flying left handed. I just can't. Yeah, flying. I'm not used to it. The wrong hand. All right, Claire. You didn't break the airplane. Poor Hula Girl. Your landing smashed. Hey. Throw Hula Girl. She was falling over long before that. Well, I don't know. Oh, welcome to Boa Vista. This is the highest this plane has been in three years. Yes, it is. And it's best of three years. After a rough start, Brad and Stu are finding their feet as a team. I think I surprised him a little by basically failing on the radio. But then he definitely surprised me by getting over it just like that. So, hey, man, you want to take it the whole way? Really? We kind of took off and immediately was like, you want the controls? I'm like, yeah. I'll help you out like this, boom, give you a heading bug. There were some concerns on this flight, but at the same time, it's the first time he's ever been in the 1900, and I was a little hard on him. Right here, if you turn right here to about 320, that'll put you on a perfect downwind. And I flew basically the whole thing all the way to Malawi. Uniform, uh, uniform approach, shock, final, one, four, report final. We're nine minutes away from the airport, and then we can start down. I'm expecting him to say, OK, I have the controls. I'll land the airplane. Yeah, you know what? Take your time coming down. Yeah. And then on descent, he made no indication he was going to take the controls from me. OK, the flaps here. Props come up whenever you call it. I would probably do it now, just so you yep. can get a feel for how much it slows it down. Pops up. I just can't make him sit in the right seat, talk on the radio, and flip the gear. That's what they call gear in aviation. Oh, you can yeah, start yeah. bringing her down to ref 10. I don't want to see anything lower than ref 10. He ain't going to learn anything being my Hey, we're getting a little slow. Look at your powers. They dropped off, so bring them back up. One of the things that I appreciate about Brad is the fact that you know he's going to allow me to learn. Whereas I've definitely flown with some people, they're like, oh, I got it, I got it. All right, runway's right there. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Three green final flaps, clear to land, process forward, yaw damps away, runway appears to be clear. You are just about ref, and we're high, so maybe bring that nose down a skosh. There's a lot of pressure when you're, when you're landing an airplane, especially a big one that you've never landed before. Keep feathering off the power, feathering off the power, all the way down. Have heels on the floor. Looking good, looking good. Start pulling the power slowly, 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 because it's going to sink like a rock. That was awesome. That's pretty smooth. Cool. Dude, did it. We did it, and you did it, man. 
That was a pretty good first landing, I'll tell you what. And then doing it in the airplane instead of a simulator. <laughs> Landing it smooth, especially the first leg, first time with Brad, it was a huge confidence booster. Yeah, so I'm tired, man. I want something to eat in a hotel room. How you doing? Yeah, Are you the, you're the man? Yeah, I'm the taxi. Uh, Very nice. Thanks yeah. for uh, waiting for us. <sighs> Once again, we're not even going to have a chance to see anything. Hotel, dinner, sleep, and leave. Oh, and this window doesn't roll down. You should probably turn the headlights on. It is freaking pitch black out here. Oh, it's freaking dark. It's black. I think he has candles in the where headlights would go. I'm a little scared. You see that? Look at look at look at this dude in the middle of the lane. It's a human being. No kidding. That's a human I know. Being. You need this way you need new headlights, man. We're gonna kill somebody. Did something just run across the road like an animal? I think I just saw a puma. What the hell? This is the Malawi Autobahn right here. Worse than any dangerous flight we've ever done, and riding in a Malawi taxi cab. Oh my god, where is this hotel? If I thought that this taxi ride was surreal, it was really just preparing us for what was at the end of the ride. Sweet I have a jacuzzi in mine. What, what's in yours? I think I think my shower curtain is covered with blood. Holy mama. Is this the Bates Motel? No, it's a crime scene. I'm going to have to shower with my boots on, for God's sake. I think this candle has seen more exciting days. <laughs> this is badass. It's a crappy hotel, but at the same time, someone's paying us a large amount of money to move their airplane. They're not paying us to sit in five-star hotels and eat lobster dinner with pretty girls. You know what I mean? I cannot wait for to have my bed bugs tomorrow. How you doing? You'll be happy to know that all of your shaving supplies, your underwear, and your pants are all sitting on the front by the car. <laughs> They're what? What? <laughs> what? what, what? I knew you'd like that. <laughs> like shaving kits open your pants. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> so they just took my shit out of the room and just stacked it on the corner. <laughs> Put it by the van. There's it's like weird. thousands of dollars worth of stuff in there. I, I gotta, I'm gonna go take care of that. I hope he's kidding me, but I don't think he is. Yeah, my shit's right there. My wallet's gone. My driver's license. My passport. What is going on? <laughs> me. I seriously don't know if this is a joke or what. I mean, seriously. My wallet's gone. All my credit cards have no cash. If I don't have my passport, I'm doomed. Yeah. Thank God for the breeze. You just push on that wing. that wing. It's Christmas Day. Carrie and Claire's present to themselves is a little R and R, just a few hours away. Okay. Um, fuel, customs, flight plan, weather. Okay. Normally in this situation, we just gas up, clear customs, and we're on our way to the Caribbean for a white sand Christmas. No, you're kidding me. That's when we ran into trouble. Customs is closed on holidays. We were here till tomorrow. So, great. Dang it. Merry Christmas. That's a bummer. Yeah. It's about to get worse. Police cut that out. Got your passport on you? The local cops are suddenly suspicious. Ah, federal police? Having a guard with a submachine gun meet you on the ramp and escort you to immigration, that was a first for me. Yeah, this is just the uh, cherry on top of my Christmas cake today. Next 
time on dangerous flights. This is a have Carrie's rule breaking ways. I might be spending this Christmas in jail. Finally caught up to him. I have no idea what I'm going to do. It can be done. It no, it can't. It cannot. Brad takes on the boss. Corey is wrong, and I'm right, and I'm not going to give in. Son of a Systems down. The altitude selector has failed. The DI's boots are failed. The Beach 1900 shows its ugly side. Those are the signs they flee to an accident. 